welcome to my channel, my name is Hermione and in today's video I'm going to show you guys some DIY wall art projects. I have tried to film this intro now on three separate occasions and I just cannot get the word wall art to sound right, it just comes out like wooble. So hopefully that's not going to be a problem today or you guys might have to ignore it because I was struggling. <laughs> anyway, so I'm gonna show you guys some DIY wall art pieces. And these are great because they do take up some space on your wall and they can make a big, big impact in your room or your home and they can be very affordable to make. So if you wanna see those, let's get into it. It's been a while since I've done an abstract painting, so I wanted to show you guys how I made these two that kind of match. If you want to try and recreate this, you'll need some canvases, paint, and multiple paint brushes. You'll need one for every color. For this project, I'm actually using a canvas from Poundland, so it's super cheap too, and I'm starting by using a foam brush, and in kind of a swirling motion, I'm using some very large strokes and applying my paint. I'm using lots of pinks and blues and making a variety of very similar colors so that they blend quite nicely. And once I got closer to the end, I used a lot more smaller strokes to blend some more colors into the areas where it's not very well blended. This next step is totally optional, but if you want to add a little bit of a metallic pop of color, you can add some size as I'm doing here with a very fine detailed brush and then use some of this craft foil. It's kind of like um, gold leaf, but a silver version. So I'm just breaking that apart and applying it gently after the size had dried. I left the foil adhere to the size for a couple of minutes and then with a foam brush, I gently got rid of the excess foil. And this is the final result. I ended up making two to kind of complement each other, but they're slightly different colors. I think this would also look really nice in different colors and using different motions as well. Next up, I wanna show you guys how I made this mini macrame with rope. It's just a tiny one, but let's get into it. For this, you will need a dowel, some rope, and some scissors. Start by cutting long pieces of your rope and wrapping it around your dowel like so. So fold it in half, make a loop, pull it underneath, and then pull the extra strings through. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. I actually ran out of rope, so I had to use a few different sizes and alternate them, but this would obviously look so much better with the same sized rope. Anyway, keep doing this until you have enough to fill your dowel up and then you should have something that looks a bit like this. Then you can go ahead and start knotting it. As you can see, I've done it on one side already. So this is how I did it. I just took one piece of rope, pulled it underneath the one to its right, and then pulled it very tightly, and it made this kind of diagonal pattern. Just keep doing this and repeat it all the way until the center, and then do the other side. This is my first time doing any kind of macrame knots, so it's not perfect, but I'd love to learn more and do a larger one. If you do try this project, I would recommend not using this kind of rope, or at least not using rope that's been wrapped around cardboard like this one that I'm showing you here, because it has lots of kinks in it and they just wouldn't come out. However, I'm still really happy with how this came out and I'd love to do another one in the future, like I said. Anyway, I cut this into a kind of triangular shape at the bottom and I used my hairbrush to fray the ends of the rope just because I kind of wanted to give it a little bit of a tassel effect. Then I just added a piece of string to hang it up with and put it on my wall. And this is the final result. I'm really pleased with it because it's so little and small and cute. I think it would look really interesting with different colors of rope and like I said, it would definitely look cool as a bigger version. Tiled and mosaic frames can be quite expensive, so I wanted to show you guys how I made this one and it was very, very cheap to do and it was actually really fun. So for this project, you'll need two colors of oven baked clay, a mirror, mine's from Poundland, and some spray paint. If your mirror or photo frame needs painting, go ahead and do that now so it has time to dry. I'm priming mine and then spray painting it white. In the meantime, you can start working with your clay. Take two colors and to create a marble effect, just kind of roll them together and then roll them out flat and keep doing this until you have a very marble texture. Obviously don't overdo it and mold them all into one color. 
Once it's rolled out very thin, you can start cutting out your tiles. I'm using a very small stencil that I made that fits my frame perfectly, and I'm using a knife to cut loads of these little tiles out. Make sure you have enough tiles before you bake them and make sure that they fit onto your frame properly and then when you're ready, go ahead and put them in the oven at the temperature suggested on the packet. Once they're done, they should look something like this. And go ahead and sand them down if they have any rough edges and then just use some hot glue and you can stick them all the way around your frame. I found hot glue really useful for this project because it dried so quickly so I didn't make any mistakes. Once you're finished, you should have something that looks a little bit like this and that you can do this once again in many different colorways. I think this would look so cool in really bright colorful marble too. Next up is this star shaped wall hanging and this is also made out of oven bake clay. So if you wanna see how to make it, let's get into it. For this project, you will need some oven bake clay, a dowel, some cookie cutters and some string. So this time, because I'm using four different colours of clay, I'm rolling the clay pieces into long sausages, that way I can combine them much easier. So then I twist them into kind of like a flump marshmallow shape, and then twist them again and roll them out, and then I keep folding them and rolling them until I get a nice kind of marble pattern. Then, using a really small star-shaped cookie cutter, I cut out 10 different shapes and I tried to get it from the nicest parts of the pattern too. I also made some beads, but I lost the footage of this for some reason. All I did to make them was use the excess clay and rolled it around in my hand and then poked a toothpick from the top to the bottom. So here's the dowel I'm using, and once they've been baked in the oven, this is what they look like. I strung a piece of elastic thread onto the beads, and using some hot glue, I secured that in place. And then with the stars, I used some hot glue again, and a wooden stick to help flatten the glue down. When placing your stars on the string, make sure that each one is evenly spaced, and that they're the same on every string. And then when you attach them to the dowel, you can have them at varying heights if you'd like, and create kind of a pattern that way. To. to attach them to the dowel, I'm just rolling the string around it and then tying it at the top, adding some glue as well to keep it safe. So this is how mine turned out, and the only thing I wish I'd done differently is that I wish I had a moon-shaped cookie cutter. I think that would be so cute. Anyway, I hope you guys like this project and you try it out for yourselves. So that's it, that's everything I have to show you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. Do let me know if you try and make any of these, I'd love to know about that. And yeah, I hope you guys have a great week and hopefully I'll see you in my next one. Bye.